cataractcoach.com. Too mushy to chop, so let's do tilt and tumble. Using this technique, we can easily remove this relatively soft nucleus. So here's our patient. You can see nicely dilated, really mild cataract. Definitely a Beverly Hills cataract. You can see the ink marks at the limbus, at the cardinal meridians. But even more importantly, there are some little marks that are on the corneal epithelium showing the steep axis for our toric monofocal lens. Taking my time to get a nice capsule axis done here, I'm going to show you the video in real time, unedited, uncut, just so we can see the complete cataract case here. So again, taking my time, I really want to perfect this. As you know, your incision and that rexus are your signature. We'll see them when we look in those eyes years and decades later. Beautiful 5 millimeter rexus measured out there. Now, important step here is hydrodissection. So there's the hydrodissection. We want to get this nucleus tilted out of the capsule bag. Very gentle. And that's a 5 millimeter rexus. Again, a soft nucleus. It's not a dense cataract. So tilt that up. I'm going to try digging it with the chop by the, the cannula and bring it up. And now I'll get the chopper and the Fago Pro. We'll try to chop this, but you'll see it's going to be a little too mushy to chop. So here comes a Fago Pro. Let's see, get that in the eye here. And now chopper comes in, and you'll see, look, here we go. A chop doesn't want to work, too mushy. So all we have to do here is just kind of tilt and tumble. So now let's tilt it out of the bag. Just tumble it into the Fago tip. And we're using some Fago power modulations, like a, a pulse mode with a low duty cycle to minimize the total energy. And it looks like we're pausing here for a moment. Maybe there was a code on the machine that needed to be reset. But this technique was popularized by Dick Lindstrom. Dr. Lindstrom described this many years ago. It's a very efficient technique, especially for a higher volume cataract surgeon, and especially in a population that doesn't have too many absolutely dense cataracts. All right, pro back in the eye. Here's the chopper. Now notice how we're just using the chopper to help tilt the nucleus more, to bring the nucleus closer to the phaco tip and away from the bag. Not using the chopper to chop, per se, but rather using the chopper to manipulate the lens pieces. And there we go. We're getting them towards the tip here. That's the last piece. That big chunk of nucleus will come down pretty easily. Using phaco power modulations to minimize the phaco energy, like a burst mode or a pulse mode, a variable or low duty cycle. And then I know you're thinking, what about the cornea? I promise you the cornea is going to be perfectly clear in this patient. So we have a good dispersive viscal acid, but we're, really, we're not operating at the endothelium. We're down at the iris plane. And you can see it makes short work of this nucleus. So again, this is meant for a softer nucleus, not necessarily a very dense one, to do tilt and tumble. If there's a denser character, I would have preferred to tilt it out of the bag and then chop it. And so now we'll switch over to the IA probe, and we'll go from there. So I encourage you to try this technique. I was surprised recently. I was talking to some colleagues at a, at a dinner party, and a couple of them hadn't heard of this technique. And I said, oh, wow, it's been around forever. And so it's worthy of me uh, putting up an extra video here for Cataract Coach so people can review this. And again, remember, we have a whole library of this stuff. If you go to the website, cataractcoach.com, yeah, leave YouTube for a minute. You can actually search by, by these keywords like tilt and tumble, and you'll see multiple videos. So Cortex is out using the IA probe to clean up some of that undersurface of the anterior capsular rim here. We're doing a little capsule polishing just with the low vacuum setting. I don't use an additional vacuum setting. I just use the same vacuum setting, and then I titrate to a low degree of vacuum just using my foot on that foot pedal. And you can see we can clean it up pretty well. If it was a bimanual IA, you may have more easy access to that sub-incisional space, but I think we've got it nicely cleaned up. We can do a little bit more once we get the eye well in the eye. Here comes our cohesive viscoelastic filling up the capsular bag. There you go. Inject, inject, inject. And now we'll get the lens and deliver it. Again, it's a monofocal torque lens for this patient. And we're aiming for a post-op goal of amateur. There's the, there's the uh, polisher. Hey, by the way, check out the website, cataracoach.com. Follow me on social media. And you definitely need to see our YouTube channel where we have our podcast, too. That's a really great podcast. Every week, a brand new podcast. And, of course, if you don't know about it, there is a free PDF book about cataract surgery and cataract coach. Yeah, you're free. Just download it. Anyway, here comes the lens going in the capsule bag. Nice and easy. Get that to open up. And then now position it, and we'll get that lined up at the correct meridian. So again, this is tilt and tumble. Oh, here you go. Look at that. Using the chopper, just do a little more polishing of the capsular rim there. There you go. You can just scrape off those um, undersurface cells with that chopper. And that looks pretty darn clean. Let's take out the viscoelastic and see how clean we got it. And then we'll get this lens lined up at the correct meridian. With a torque lens, obviously very important to remove the viscoelastic from behind the optic. You want that optic sitting directly on the posterior capsule. And these hydrophobic acrylic lenses tend to be slightly tacky, and they'll stick kind of where you put them. So again, taking out all that viscoelastic from behind the optic, that's important. 
and then we'll get the lens lined up into a correct correct position at the right meridian, and then we will just seal up the incisions, call it done, beautiful case. But I encourage you, you learn all the surgical techniques, learn tilt and tumble. You're gonna have a case like this where this case would not have been great with divide and conquer. Tilt and tumble really was a fantastic choice for this patient and for others too. All right, thanks for watching, and again, please, do me the favor, hit that like and subscribe button down below on YouTube, and don't forget about our website, cataractcoach.com. Thanks for watching.